So this is our last lecture for this module on optimal resource extraction of non-renewable resources. What we'll cover in this lecture is hoteling when firms have market power. We have to talk about market power because there's a lot of market power in the energy industry broadly. Um, and market power is one of the main externalities we talked about in module two. Can the hoteling model explain resource prices? Uh, and then hoteling under pressure so is their reading. <coughs> so non-renewable resource extraction in competitive markets. Despite no market power, we, we've seen that prices don't equal marginal costs. We know that in competitive markets, prices should equal marginal costs, but they don't uh, in this case where there's a finite resource. We need to account for the opportunity cost of extraction today or the scarcity rent. A unit, of a, a unit extracted today is a unit unavailable in the future. That's another way of thinking of the scarcity rent we looked at a couple of lectures ago. Therefore, we're going to choose quantities such that the present value of marginal profits is the same across all periods. We saw that a couple of lectures ago. But now let's consider the optimal choice of a quantity for the owner of a monopoly a monopolist coal mine with a downward sloping demand curve. Okay, so now we have a demand curve and our marginal revenue curve. Remember that the marginal revenue has twice the slope as the inverse demand curve, and we have the same marginal cost curve as before. But now this coal producer is a monopolist. Let's say they're a producer in Wyoming, um, and they're supplying coal to the, the general mountain region. Suppose we have a monopolist coal mine with 40 in reserves, 40 units of coal in reserves, and two periods in which to exhaust them. Same problem as before, but now it's a monopolist. The monopolist has a marginal cost equal to 10 plus 2Q and faces a demand curve given by 110 minus Q. The monopolist has a discount rate of 10% and receives revenues and pays costs at the end of the, of the year. Let's find the optimal quantities produced in each period for this monopolist. So we're going to see these two graphs again, and we're going to set present value of profits equal to each other. In this case, profits look slightly different um, because we have uh, not a flat demand curve, but um, a downward sloping demand curve. But again, profits are the areas in uh, the polygon shaded in green. Um, and the monopolist in year one is going to produce all the way up to the point where marginal revenue intersects marginal costs. So they're going to produce 25. Um, and in year two, they're going to produce 15. They get a profit from that of $2,004.13. Uh, but can they do any better? Okay, let's equalize the present value of the difference between price and marginal cost in both years. So with that, we're going to get a profit of $2,082.12, slightly better. Can we do better? Can we equalize the present of value of the difference between marginal revenue and marginal cost in both years? Okay, instead of prices and marginal cost, the, the marginal revenue and marginal cost in both years. So this is going to be the profits for the monopolist. Uh, in this case, we get profits of present value profits of $2,082.83. So we're still doing better. Um, and that's going to be the optimal solution equalizing the present value of the difference between marginal revenue and marginal cost between the two years. The scarcity rent for the monopolist is the difference between the marginal revenue and marginal cost, as you can see on the graph in year one here. It's slightly different between the scarcity rent for the perfectly competitive producer, the difference between prices and marginal cost. Now we're considering uh, the monopolist who cares about marginal revenue instead of prices. So they're going to be thinking about the difference between marginal revenue and marginal cost. <laughs> this is broken down into uh, several uh, boxes here. We have monopoly rent in kind of orangish red. So that's the rents up or profits above what the perfectly competitive producer would be able to get. Uh, then we have the scarcity rent, and that's the rents um, that are associated with the finite resource, the reason prices are generally above marginal costs. And then we have the competitive rent, the, the regular rent that we would receive or the producer surplus in a perfectly competitive market with no finite resource and no monopoly. 
So what are the, some predictions of the hoteling rule for a monopolist? For a monopolist mining industry with no extraction costs, marginal revenue will rise at the discount rate. With extraction costs, the scarcity rent or marginal revenue, less marginal costs. So this, remember this is different than the perfectly competitive market in the sense that we're replacing um, price with marginal revenue. So scarcity rent uh, will rise at the discount rate. Uh, compared to a competitive industry, a monopolist will restrict the initial rate of extraction, just like um, in, in a regular monopoly versus perfectly competitive setting, the monopolist is going to produce less in order to have higher prices to, to gain some profits. Um, they do that in this uh, non-renewable resource setting as well. Uh, and initial reserves will be spread over a longer time period uh, because they're uh, withholding some of their extraction uh, because of their monopoly power. So they're still going to extract their or exhaust their entire resource, but they're going to uh, do so over a longer time period. So in this sense, a monopolist is considered a conservationist friend, right? Why is that the case? Okay, so oil produces uh, negative externalities in terms of pollution. And if you have a monopolist oil producer, um, they're going to produce less oil today than they otherwise would if it was a competitive market, meaning that there's less oil for consumption by consumers and the oil that's available is, is um, more expensive. And so this is what we actually want to see from an environmental perspective. We want uh, prices of oil to be higher and therefore consumption to be less. It's just that it's happening through different channels. It's happening through monopoly power rather than uh, government policies like taxes. Will resource prices increase forever? It seems somewhat logical given what we've talked about with the hoteling model that they might. For both the monopoly and the competitive versions of the hoteling rule, we have the scarcity rent growing over time at a rate R, which implies that prices are also growing at some positive rate. In the case of marginal cost equals zero, prices are going to rise at rate R. If we extend this to the infinite horizon, this says that prices will rise uh, forever. But is this actually true? No, of course not. Uh, there's going to be new alternative sources of energy or minerals that are going to be developed that can serve as a substitute. And this substitute is known as a backstop. Eventually, a backstop substitute will be developed. Why? So marginal cost of the backstop acts as a future ceiling on the price of non-renewable resources. Let's think of an example here. Let's think of the price of gasoline. If it increases because oil becomes scarce, then the backstop is electric vehicles. And the marginal cost of driving an electric vehicle is the back, is serves as the backstop or the future ceiling on the price of the non-renewable resource or the, or the gasoline in this case. So what's going to happen? Consumers will switch to electric vehicles when the marginal cost of driving electric vehicles is lower than the marginal cost of driving the gas-powered vehicles. Like if the price of driving goes up to $50 per gallon of gasoline, you're going to buy an electric vehicle because it's cheaper to, to drive. And so that $50 uh, for driving an electric vehicle, or uh, the, the, the price of driving an electric vehicle is the, the highest that we would be willing to pay for gasoline. And that's the backstop price of gasoline. Does it look like hoteling holds in practice? So let's look at some ser price series for common metals, oil, et cetera, to see if it looks like the hoteling model holds in practice. Here's the price of nickel. Okay, we just said the hoteling model suggests that prices should increase over time. Well, the price of nickel increased to some extent in um, the mid 2000s, but then it's come down uh, since then. About tin. I cannot see a trend in tin prices. About copper prices. Same deal. I don't see an obvious trend in copper prices. Oil, you can squint at it and kind of say, yeah, maybe uh, there's an upward trend, but we do see a decline in oil prices um, more recently. So what might explain resource prices uh, that don't consistently grow? Several factors. Um, the hoteling model assumes marginal costs are constant. 
but in fact marginal costs of production are changing right we've seen uh, fracking come on online as the price of um, as the price of oil has increased uh, that's going to push the marginal cost of extraction upwards uh, causing the prices to go up um, demand is changing hoteling model again assumes demand is constant but the demand is clearly changing the world is dynamic and we have um, economies going in and out of boom and bust cycles um, china grew in the early 2000s china's economy grew in the early 2000s causing the price of oil to go up um, and then we saw the recession in 2008 which caused the price, price of oil to decline dramatically we also know that we have new reserves found even if the new reserves are uh, easily extractable or uh, regardless of the new reserve, reserve reserves are easily extractable um, they're going to add to our stock meaning the scarcity rent is going to change and so there's a, there's a variety of reasons the hoteling model doesn't hold in practice So I've asked you to read the Hoteling Under Pressure article, at least the first and second sections in the conclusion. And so we'll have a discussion on how sensitive is oil production to oil prices? How sensitive is the drilling uh, of new oil wells to oil prices? And why is the paper called Hoteling Under Pressure? For the next module, module I want you to also take a look at an article by Daniel Jurgen, who we will see uh, several times in the oil section of this class uh, has a lot of good books on this topic and the article is called There Will Be Oil.